Hey YouTube, TechSparrow here with another simple API example video. Seeing as we're well into summer and people are probably doing a lot of their summer activities, I thought it'd be a good idea to take a peek at the Strava API. So to make our connection and to make our API call, we're going to be using Python and the requests OAuth lib. Okay, great. Well, let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is go to Strava and create yourself an account. Once you have that account, you want to come to your dashboard and then go into their settings under your profile picture here. And all the way down here, there's a, a link or a button here for my API application. So as before with a lot of the other examples, what you need to do is register an application with the resource provider. So I've already done that and experimented a little bit. So the process is pretty straightforward and it looks like they only let you take, make one at a time. So I'm not gonna hold your hand through that part because um, like I said, it's pretty intuitive and it's just filling out some questions and forms. But the thing that you need to be absolutely sure that you do is when you fill out the application form is to put down this uh, field here. Treat this as your redirect URL. Here they're just calling it authorization callback domain, which is a correct way to describe it as well. I just wanted to make sure that people understood that this is the same as the redirect URL. Okay, and then if there's any additional research that you want to go ahead and do, um, you can just navigate to developers.strava.com and basically everything that I have learned and I'm going to demonstrate comes from their documentation. Uh, it's a very good documentation. One thing that I would note though is make sure that when they give you any sort of examples, uh, especially with the URLs, that it contains the v3 one. Let's begin with getting our working environment set up by creating a project directory, simple API Strava. And then in that directory, we're gonna start off with two files. The first one is a git ignore file. And in there, two lines, very easy, V, E, and V. So that's telling git to ignore virtual environment directory. And then also something new for my videos is this dot E and V file. And we'll discuss that one later. But that's all we need for our git ignore for now. And then, uh, we're going to make a run file, simple bi strava.py. Okay, now I think we've got enough to crack open up a terminal and get our virtual environment set up. So, seen it many times before, python3-m, venv, v -E -N -V, and venv again. It should only take a moment. There you go. You see it's popping up. Yes. Um, you say yes to that, that's basically telling VS Code, yeah, this virtual environment I just created, I want you to, to uh, reference that. So when we start writing our code and importing libraries, it's looking in here and not our global um, installation directory. So um, a little side note here, we can turn on our virtual environment by using the command source. And then we dig into the directory here to the activate script, hit enter, there you go. Our uh, terminal prompt here is prepended with venv that lets us know that we're in the environment. We can start safely installing things. So pip3 install requests, and we're also going to need the requests oauth lib, and also this one here, python dash dot env. Great, and then just to verify that, we go pip3 freeze. And that'll list out everything that's been installed. .env, request, OAuth lib. I think there's another OAuth lib. Yeah, so these all are kind of related and calling to each other. Great, so that basically gets our environment set up. Okay, finally, we have arrived to the coding part. Thank you for your patience. So the first thing we're gonna start off with here is a couple of imports. So we're gonna do from request OAuth lib. We want to import the OAuth2 session object. 
And then from .env, we want to import the load.env function. And then we're also going to need the OS library. Okay, we'll save that off. And then um, we're going to create a couple of variables here. And uh, we're going to need the client ID. We're also going to need a client secret and our redirect URL. So these are like the three main pieces that you kind of put together during the registration of your app. And normally in the examples, I would say, okay, you know, we're going to hard code this and then we're going to hard code, oops, and we're going to hard code this and we're going to hard code this. And I would always go through this shtick about like, okay, client secret, don't save it in your file, don't commit it to your repositories, yada, yada, yada. And I always say, oh, I'll, I'll make a video about that, about how to do that. But there's actually this library here, the .env uh, library, which makes it like super easy to do. So um, let me show you how to do that. We're gonna come back here. We're gonna create another file. It's gonna be a .env file. And from here, make sure it's on the, you know, right under the root directory there. And then here, we're going to basically identify a couple of secrets here. Client ID and client secret should be good enough. And then those things, we get them from Strava. So here's my client ID. Copy that. Go back here. Oh, there's no strings required here unless there's spaces and then here we go here's the secret copy and then we're going to save that and return to our run file here and now instead of you know hard coding these here what we're going to do is we're going to call into the um, OS library and we're going to do get env and then we're going to identify which secret we want to get. And it's uh, that easy. So now um, we can kind of use our client ID and client secret a little bit more programmatically um, instead of uh, having to hard code them and then be very careful about saving and committing and and having them out in the open like that. Just simply by creating this env file and then, you know what, there's one more step here. You have to call this load.env uh, method first. And then, you know, now we can start digging into the environment variables and grabbing our secrets. So it's just a lot cleaner and a lot safer. And then as long as you do this get ignore file in the beginning and say, hey, ignore this, right? You don't ever accidentally commit it and you can save it and everything and um, that solves your client secret problem. Okay, next piece is the redirect URL. I have my static GitHub page um, just used for these examples right there. Um, I suggest you do something like that. But honestly, this can be anything really uh, for the example. Um, I'm not sure if Strava allows you to do it from localhost or not. I didn't check that out, but um, it's usually a pretty good idea to make sure you're using the HTTPS protocol, not the HTTP protocol. Uh, they need the secure ones usually. Okay, now we got to start thinking about getting our program rolling. So we're going to create a session variable and it's going to be our OAuth2 session object. So um, it requires two parameters for this example. It's gonna need the client ID. And we gotta set the client ID here. And it's also gonna need our redirect URL. Here they're calling it a URI. URL, they're pretty closely the same thing. And um, to do the first leg here, so this would be the, the uh, user using your app is going to be from our app. We're going to send them to Strava to verify um, their identity, right? Like to log in. And then they're also going to um, authorize the permissions that our application is going to be asking for. 
so where that link is where you send them to verify their account or to log in is the auth base url and this information is found in the strava documentation here i've got it set to the side here in my notes let me copy it so you guys don't have to bear with my terrible typing and i'm kind of lazy anyway so there we go and um, they also ask when you send the user down there is to um, pass a scope so we can do that by getting our session um, object here dotting into scope and then setting it to um, what we're going to be needing so for our example here we're using profile read all and again this is in the documentation when you look up the scopes they'll show you all the different scopes that are available and um, to now create this authorization link, I'm gonna call auth link, there's a fancy function that does some uh, automation for us, so we don't have to do it by hand, but it's authorization URL method. Oh, you see there, the IntelliSense got it for me. And then we're gonna pass our base URL into there. So with all of that stuff, we have the first step. So this is, now we can click that link Get ourselves verified and see if we can can't get ourselves a token so to get access to that link we're going to do we're going to print an f screen i'm sorry an f f f string there we go we're going to say hey click here and we're going to pass in our auth link now this method actually returns a tuple so we have to dig into the first element in the tuple, which is um, you know, the actual link. Okay, so now we're moving on to the next leg of the program. So that is the part where we uh, collect our authorization code from Strava, which is gonna be embedded inside the redirect URL as a URL uh, query parameter. And then we're gonna exchange that code for an OAuth token, which will allow us to make API calls to protected endpoints. So um, we have to uh, parse our uh, redirect URL. So we're gonna create a, a redirect response object or object, a variable here. And we're gonna ask for the input from our user. We'll do this part manually and uh, here are the instructions paste uh, URL here and there we go that's good there um, and now we can start the exchange the exchange process here so <clears throat> uh, we need the token URL so this is the actual endpoint to send our code to make that exchange uh, again this is something that you can find from the Strava docs and I have it on the side here to my notes. There we go. And then we have to go ahead and actually call a function on our session object to go ahead and fetch that token. So um, let's grab our session object here. And there's a method called fetch token. It takes several parameters. Um, the first one, token URL. So our token URL here. It's also going to need the client ID and client secret. Let's do that. I don't know why, but sometimes those IntelliSense uh, hints are a little heavy-handed. And um, the authorization response parameter is our redirect response. So we'll copy that, drop it in here. And then um, this is kind of tricky if you're not um, very uh, accustomed to this, but this parameter here tells our session object to add the client ID to the, I believe it's like uh, part of the header. And um, that is part of the contract on Strava side. So, okay, so we're coming into the final stretch here. Um, assuming that this, um, token fetching uh, exercise goes as planned, we can go ahead and make a call to a protected endpoint. So we're gonna create a response variable. 
and use our session object again here to do a get call. And again, in my notes, I have a endpoint here that just fetches um, the profile of an athlete. And that probably has to be a string. It most definitely has to be a string. There we go. And depending on the response that we get, we're going to want to see a couple of things. So let's do a couple of print statements here. Uh, let's make a little bit of room. Do one new line character. We'll make another F string here. We'll call it we'll print out response status. So we want to look at the HTTP code first, right? Let's see. Did we get a 200 or 400 or 500 response uh, object here? We can dot into it and grab the status code. And we also want to actually get um, a reason. So if there was a 400 or some sort of error, we want to kind of understand what was going on. So this will give us a little bit more information than just a number. Okay again and then you know what um, I was kind of digging into that object the uh, response object for this video and I saw this kind of cool, cool stuff in there so here's one that's kind of neat it shows you how long the request took let's print that for fun and then um, let's get to the part we've been trying to get here the response text will show you you know the body or the, the payload um, let's separate that too. Let's give it another new line. Do a little bit of fancy stuff here. That, that's 15. It was kind of like a little horizontal rule there. And uh, one more here. New line. Okay, getting fancy. I know, I know. Um, and geez, well, that basically wraps up the coding part. So I think we're ready to move on and, and put this into practice. Let me save the file. Mm. Okay, let's fire this off. So uh, let's open up a terminal as soon as it will behave. There we go. Virtual environment is on. Let's take a look at our uh, current working directory. We need to CD into our project. There we go. Then we simply run Python three simple API strava.py. Okay, so um, saying click here, here's where we're going to authenticate with the identity service from Strava. So let's go ahead and open that up. Here you can see, um, you know, the logo for the app, you know, an app name, and this is the website to our app. I think um, this is separate from the redirect URI. So this is another thing you fill out in the form. And then here it's showing the scope that our app is asking for. So we're going to go ahead and authorize. And we've been redirected to that static website. And you can see that's what's up here in the navigation bar. And um, appended to that URL is the state and our code. There it is. Okay, great. And the scope as well. So Let's copy that and return to our program. Uh, it's asking us to paste it right there. Okay. Let's do that. Now that that's pasted in there, um, it goes ahead and makes that exchange to get the token and then it makes the call. So it looks like the call was successful. We got a 200. Reason was okay. The time elapsed, so that it's pretty fast, I guess. And then here's our. Um, response object here so great but basically wraps up this example video and uh i hope it was informative and fun i had a great time making it um if you did enjoy this video greatly appreciate likes and comments and subscriptions and all that good jazz and um also if you have an api that you'd like me to take a crack at please go ahead and put that in the comments below i will definitely uh, try my best to get to all of them Thanks and uh, catch you next time, YouTube.